In the 1930s, Swiss biochemist Albert Hoffman started working at a giant pharmaceutical company called Sandoz. He was bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and ready for a challenge. His supervisor, a really renowned biochemist, Arthur Stoll, said he had just the thing, and then flung a bunch of this thing called ergot at Hoffman. I mean, well, flung it figuratively. He didn't actually, like, pick it up and throw it, because chemical safety! So it's actually possible that you're probably more familiar with the effects of ergot than you are with ergot itself. And yes, it is pronounced ergot. I did a lot of research after mispronouncing Penzias so often last episode. Ergot is a parasitic fungus that's commonly found infecting rye. It's not great for the rye, but it's especially very extremely not great for the people that accidentally bake it into bread and then eat it. In medieval times, it was super common, causing epidemics of people hallucinating, people vomiting, experiencing diarrhea, and in the most extreme cases, losing limbs to gangrene. It most often resulted in horrible, horrible deaths. This episode is super happy, guys! Ergot is not only traditionally the source of horrific death, it was also used back in medieval times as a sort of herbal medicine to induce labour. That seems safe. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Oh look, we have this thing that causes horrific death. Let's give that to pregnant women! Yay! Arthur Stoll had recently tried and succeeded in isolating the active ingredient in ergot. And it's actually still used today. It's called ergotamine. Unfortunately, it was a little bit tricky to make a lot of it because it was super sensitive. Plus, scientists didn't know if ergot itself contained anything else that was even remotely useful. It was highly likely but nobody had ever really tried. So Hoffman set about trying to find other useful things within ergot, and he settled on this one particular compound called lysergic acid. For the next few years, his research consisted of adding bits and pieces to lysergic acid and then feeding them to rats to see if they did anything. He made 24 of these compounds, and then he got to number 25. So he made LSD-25, fed it to his rats, and uh, apart from them getting a little bit restless, nothing really happened. And so he put it away and left it to languish for five years. Hoffman himself isn't actually 100% sure why he went back to remake LSD-25, but remake it he did. And by the time he got to the final step, he started to feel... weird. April 16th, 1943. I was forced to interrupt my work in the laboratory in the middle of the afternoon and proceed home being affected by a remarkable restlessness, combined with a slight dizziness. At home, I lay down and sank into a not unpleasant intoxicated-like condition, characterised by an extremely stimulated imagination. In a dreamlike state, with eyes closed, I found the daylight to be unpleasantly glaring, I perceived an interrupted stream of fantastic pictures, extraordinary shapes with intense kaleidoscopic play of colours. After some two hours, this condition faded away. Yeah, um, I don't think he had a moustache. Also, he was Swiss German. Okay. This experience was nuts. Hoffman ended up concluding that he must have at some point got a tiny, tiny amount of LSD on his fingers, and it must have absorbed into his skin, causing the hallucinations and all of the visual distortions. So understandably, Hoffman never wanted to touch it ever again. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, what would this story be without a little bit of self-experimentation, right? It's okay. He's gonna go there. He ended up enlisting the help of one of his assistants and then decided under very controlled conditions to ingest a small amount of the LSD. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Hoffman was a really good scientist. He kept meticulous records of every single reaction and synthesis that he did in the laboratory. But the notes for this particular experiment are unusually sketchy, possibly for obvious reasons as I'm about to go into. At 4.20pm on the 19th of April 1943, he took 0.25 milligrams of LSD. Now to put that number into perspective, these Panadol tablets have 500 milligrams of paracetamol. So we're talking a minuscule amount. He was fairly certain that this was going to be absolutely okay. Oh, it was not okay. <laughs> 
Self-experimentation, not a good plan, guys. By 5 p.m. he wrote that he was starting to experience dizziness, feelings of anxiety, symptoms of paralysis, and visual distortion. At 6 p.m. he and his assistant decided that things had started to escalate a little bit too quickly for their liking, and they rode their bicycles home. On the way there, Hoffman describes the feeling of being completely stationary, like he was kind of stuck. But they were cycling home at a fairly fast pace. His journal entry finishes with three slightly ominous words. Most severe crisis. Over the next few days, he drifted in and out of a weird sort of mental state. Things quickly took a bit of a dark turn for Hoffman. You see, he kind of came at this experience not really knowing what was going to happen. And so all the way through this intense experience, he was thinking in the back of his head that this was it. He'd taken too much. He was going to die. And so he began to be assaulted by all of these horrible hallucinations. As you may have guessed though, given that we have his eyewitness testimony, he didn't die. Yay! <laughs> Hoffman had entirely accidentally discovered possibly one of the safest psychoactive drugs ever. LSD has some other really interesting properties and uses, but since I've significantly run out of time, if you want to read about them, you can go and check out my blog. There are links in the description. I should point out that even though it is relatively safe when you compare it to other things, it is still a drug. And as with any drug, you should only use it under the advice of a medical professional. Hoffman went on to discover and synthesize a bunch of other common drugs that are still in use today. but he's probably going to be remembered most for LSD. In fact, he referred to it for the rest of his life as his problem child. He was a little bit conflicted about it, but it is a problem child that he never would have discovered if he hadn't been wearing gloves. Yeah, let's not dwell on that too much. If you enjoyed that episode, there are plenty more where that came from. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. All the links for those are in the description below. You can also go to my website, www.class509.com, to find out some more information. Go and check it out. It's pretty fun. I mean, there's less tea, but, you know, there's also links to... stuff. <laughs> You may be wondering why the bicycles as well. Well, actually, this was in Switzerland in World War II, and at that time there were severe restrictions on vehicles, and so bicycles were kind of their only option. I would imagine that had he had the option, he would not have kind of relied on his own steam to get home. I have a feeling his assistant would have driven him, because that would have been a weird trip. <laughs> <laughs>